Hi pets. Um, I'm on the gaming back again. I have another um, tutorial that I'm going to do this time for Aisha. It's cold out here, so why not do someone who throws snowballs, right? Well, anyway, this one's going to be a little bit more in detail uh, for a few reasons. I found while playing Aisha, there are a lot of different ways I enjoyed building her. There, and she really shines a specialist for this reason because her builds are so versatile. There is a build which is my skill set or my item set number one, which is more defense oriented, staying in the game and kind of just being a pest and letting your team clean up you know keeping them locked in place now the builds are very similar if you notice the two main things that are different are the specialist are the special item for her in the first build on one we have frozen cape which increases your attack defense critical rate and both these builds have a lot of crit in them but anyway and cooldown reduction now this enhances snowfall cloak it reduces the cooldowns three by three seconds and increases damage from it decreases damage from enemies by five percent increases fixed damage to enemies by additional five and reflects five percent of damage from enemies and the other thing that i actually have on this on this uh item set is reactive armor it basically enhances the cloak as well it reflects 10 percent of damage from enemies damage reflection is calculated based on damage before it's reduced by your own defense and reduces damage taken based on defense now if your defense is 180 or above you get uh, negative, or you get negative 10 fixed. If it's 220 or above, you get negative 15 fixed. You're not going to get it to 220 or above on her unless you build straight defense, which you can with Aisha, and it'll work just fine. Now, I'm actually going to go more into detail about my item set too, because I feel more, most people like to play aggressively. If, in fact, um, y'all do want a video on this item set one, I will show you exactly how it works, and I'll come back to it. But right now, we're going to look at item set two. But first things first, of course, let's look at the skills. Alright, so Aisha throws snowballs. That's what she does. Now, it, her snowballs do inflict frostbite every time she hits an enemy with a skill. Um, not her auto attacks, just her skill. Now, frostbite functions as follows. The first frostbite decreases movement speed by 10% for 3 seconds. Each frostbite afterwards, it decreases movement speed by 5%. Max stacks is 5. Her Q is snowstorm. Calls down snowballs that do 38 plus whatever your damage amplif amplifier is in damage. Any snowballs that hit the ground shatter and do additional damage to the enemy within 100 units. So if the snowball misses, it still does damage, basically, is what that's saying. She can continue the snowstorm for up to 3 seconds by holding the skill key. It costs 5 mana every 0.5 seconds. It ignores half a damage dispersion. The W is cold snap. Essentially, I'll just explain this really quick. The more stacks you have with the frostbite, um, more damage this does and when you actually activate it if you have one stack it'll freeze them for barely any time at all um, but if you have a full five stacks it'll actually freeze them for a good duration her E snowfall cl snowfall cloak it wraps Aisha in a snowfall cloak for eight seconds Aisha receives the following effects damage taken is decreased by 10% and it reflects 10 damage plus 10% of damage from enemies her ultimate she drops Murphy the snowman and as funny as that sounds it is exactly how it sounds Aisha drops a snowman up and damages up to three times the snowman Murphy the summon will actually sit in place and slow people for 10 seconds so people walking past it they get their movement speed reduced by 30 percent her a is mega snowball she hurls a snowball straight ahead doing 136 damage plus whatever your amplification is now I'm gonna show you her skills There's not a lot of uh, combos per se because she's kind of like a, a range caster specialist but there are things you can do little tips and tricks here and there so her auto attack is just legitimately throwing snowballs remember her passive gets a stack every time you hit someone with a skill so I'm gonna throw a snowball my A she gets a stack of frostbitten which you can see under him as a snowfall as a snowflake and it has the number one there that number increases every time you hit them with it until it reaches max stacks now again it's every time you get someone gets hit with a skill so it's at ma max stacks right now so it's not gonna go any higher um, I'm gonna let it go away now her Q every single snowball that hits with the Q creates a stat so it's not you hit them with the Q once and that's one stack no every snowball that falls creates a stack it's gonna hit max stacks before the Q is ever finished you can let go of the Q to release it and um, move on about your day now one thing I do want to make note because some people might be worried oh well if I'm holding Q I'm kind of like a sitting duck you can activate your snowfall cloak within your Q hold Q press E it comes on now at the same time when they have those stacks they're either gonna try and get to you or get away from you so what you can do at that point let's go ahead and kill her so I can show you guys mm -mm -mm. 
All right, so she is dead. I'm gonna reactivate my Q, and I'm gonna let the stacks build up. If she tries to dash away, I can dash towards her, and then hit her with my W. That creates the Frozen. Now I'll show you the difference. Here's one stack with Frozen, the Frostbite, that's it. You saw how fast that was? So we're gonna do a few stacks, two stacks, still, still pretty quick. Your goal with Frostbite is to try and get as many stacks on the enemy as possible without them really being aware of what's going on and then freezing them. So you're holding them in place for not only yourself but your teammates. As she can get a lot of kills, she can actually carry the game. This particular build I'm, I, I'm about to go over with you guys does in fact do a lot of damage later in the game. It gets, mind you, it also depends on how you build it. So I'll actually explain how I go through this particular setup. So I'll go with my boot, oh, well before I do that, let me show you what Murphy does. So like we said, it drops Murphy, three, three hits, one, two, three, and it sits there. Now anybody that walks past this will um, be slowed. Anybody that's in it will also be slowed. It doesn't do additional damage while it's just sitting there. If you noticed, it did however do stacks. So one, two, three, let's hit her with a four and boom, she's frozen. So that's a good way to stop people from escaping. So they're trying to run away from you, right? They're actually going the opposite direction. Then you just drop Murphy on them. They get hit a little bit, and then they also get slowed. Now that does inc that does actually do the on hit effects, like from Plasma Cutter, which is the I, I use this on a lot of a lot of hypers, honestly. But what it does, it inflicts 58 additional damage per second for three seconds. It act it procs on everything. It's not just on your auto attacks. But anywho, so now that we know what her skill set basically does. I'm gonna go over what the items I chose are. Now. This is how I typically do it. I do Crimson Spinners, so I have my crit bonus and uh, movement speed right off the bat. From there, I go to Orb of Winter, and the reason I do this is because it increases the damage and range on the Mega Snowball, which is my A. So it goes further, does more damage, and that's something that also puts one of those stacks on there. But in addition to that, it gives me Life Steal and Crit Rate. So the first two stages of it give me Life Steal, second two give me Crit Rate. So that synergizes with everything else I'm building after which I go back to my Crimson Spinner. So this is just pr personally how I build, by the way. You can do it in whatever order you want. You can change these items up. This is just something that works for me. Anyway, so I go back to my Crimson Spinners, get more crit and more move speed. Now I'm running everywhere and I'm making it, or I'm hoping I'm making it to the point where when I get these stacks on people, you know, they're not gonna get away and I can just keep keep burning them out. Normally, if there's, if there's tanks like Athena, cause she's pretty ridiculous, I will go Plasma Cutter first just so I can have that bleed on them, or that burn, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's essentially the same thing. Otherwise, it okay, so Valter and Athena, I definitely go into this item if I'm going against them. Otherwise, I will do Permafrost Locket because it has defense bypass. And whichever one of these two I do first, I do the, set, I do the other one directly after. So if I do Permafrost Locket, I go into Plasma Cutter. If I do Plasma Cutter, I go into Permafrost Locket. Reason being is because if I do Permafrost Lock and have that defense bypass so my damage is getting through, then I go into Plasma Cutter and my damage is getting through, plus I have uh, more defense penetration and the bleed. If I do the Plasma Cutter first, it's the same thing, just in reverse. It just depends on what I need first. So if I have someone like Valter or Athena who are really good solid tanks and Valter does heal on his ult, I kind of want that burn damage first. If not, you know, if they have some other tanks, or if I'm if I'm ahead enough, I can do permafrost locking because I get the attack, the crit rate, and the defense bypass. And it also has an enhance on your skill, of course, snowstorm, which is something that piles your stacks on high, as you saw earlier, and in, and decreases the cooldown by two seconds and increases the damage by fifteen percent. Now, one thing I want to make note of, I can't show you this here because there are no towers, but one of the things that that Ice's Q does is it destroys towers. I mean, it shreds them because it does actually proc crits on towers. In addition to that, when you go into the jungle areas, those little guardians or whatever, you can completely wipe them. You can do, I think it's it's two Qs after you, because you'll Q, then you'll do auto attacks. You'll you know throw your A out a few times. By the time your second Q comes up, when you do it, if you let the Q run, you'll kill it. Period. At the end. You can you can take the and I'm talking with just these three items. You can take the invader. Honestly, you can do it with the crimson spinners and just this orb of uh, wa uh, winter, you can do that. Now I'm talking about Invader Mark 1, not not 2 or now or the Executioner 2, no, I don't try and do that with 3 items, it's silly, you'll die. Anywho, so after I go into this, I have my defense bypass, alright, it's looking good. 
and I got my crits. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this plasma cutter. Get in here, now she's bleeding, frostbitten, bleeding and frozen. So, still bleeding, mind you. So, let's take that another level up. She's gonna die. Alright, so I'm gonna do this at the beginning so she shouldn't die. So, bleeding, frozen, and bleeding. Now, mind you, this thing doesn't have any defense, so of course she just died. But the point is, it helps shred tanks. As a ranged character, you kind of want to do that to help, um, to help with your team and team fights. That's one thing a lot of people need to understand, too, when you play specialists or even strikers or assassins. You may or may not always get the kill. Someone may snipe you. But it's okay, especially if their death timers are high and you can get to that, uh, that final tower to destroy it. It's okay if it doesn't show by your score that you were the carry. It is okay. Anyhow. So the next thing I actually go into is either Breath of Fire or White Steel. Honestly, it really depends on how I'm feeling at this point. If I'm feeling like crazy ahead, I'll do Breath of Fire. If I'm feeling like, you know what, I want to I want to get some defense on me just a little bit, just a little bit for right now, I'll do White Steel. White Steel is also in this build just in case I need defense early if my team or myself were just doing poorly. Because it starts, it has a very short, uh, a very low cost start, 780 gold. If I feel we're doing very poorly, including myself, myself including that statement, I'll start that item. I'll do my Crimson Sprinters, and I'll go straight there. Then I'll go to my Orbital Wind, just so I can have that life still. That way I have some defense going on, my max health is increased, and I have increased health regen by 75% of max mana. So it, it helps. But we already know what Breath of Fire does, you know, you get your max health attack and um, some crits critical rate and movement speed but that's not why we really want it we want it for that explosion that happens after you use an attack so boom bam now I have that I have that explosion I have all this crit rate and I have the bleeding on so I'm just doing gradual damage as much as I can so essentially I is kind of tricky to go against if you do it right basically what you're gonna want to do is kind of lure people into a false sense of security especially tanks or characters like Wukong that have a lot of in and outs or characters even like a Lou that think they can just go in and go back out or Lewis like they there are a lot of people that play assassins hyper aggressively and assassins can't be hyper aggressive but with Aisha you kind of want to use that against them so when they go in on you or your team you put as many stacks on them as you can as po as quickly as possible like with your Q or just stacking A then you hit them with that W freeze them don't use your ult yet if the, your team has not killed them or if you they're not dead and you're under tower if you are under tower and they start trying to walk away then ult them so you're gonna slow everybody that's there down. You may or may not die, it depends, but I guarantee you someone will die there on the enemy team. Now if your team is there with you, you can completely wipe them that way. Especially if you have an Anisha on your team, or Ignisha. She synergizes very well with this chick, believe it or not. Those, those two playing together is pretty ridiculous because you're just constantly slowing and she's constantly burning. But anyway, so with the white still, put that on there. Now we have defense, attack, and max mana and the increased health regen and the increased um, health by 200% of the max mana. So that's my simple guide for her. It's a little complicated at, I guess at first because of the different builds I like to do with her but these are my um, my suggestions to start with and kind of build your own item set and work around her skills, see how they work for you and see what works best for you. Now remember, have a great day, morning, noon or night, get a good cup of coffee, tea, water, whatever it is you're drinking in there and um, to, have, to make your day go a little bit better. Of course, as always, and I hope to see you on the next one.